Hello and welcome back to my basement. This is Jeremiah Wolf, and today I have a question, uh, or a viewer question that I um, wanted to talk about. Let's take a look. All right. It hurts when I pee. Anyway, uh, it hurts when I pee, commented uh, recently on my um, CCIE video from, from uh, a while ago. Uh, speaking of which, uh, geez, very soon here, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be making a video, Was It Worth It, about the CCIE. Um, I think this is going to be interesting, so we'll talk about it, but that's not what we're doing right now. So anyway, it hurts when I pee. says, congrats, Jeremiah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I had a quick question for you. On the exam, are you allowed to use a calculator on your computer if I were to do BYOD to help with things like route summarization? Um, okay, so first off, BYOD, bring your own device, is an option if you're not aware. You can bring your own device. I, I think this is only to the mobile labs. Um, you can bring your own device and... Um, they will plug in a USB drive, and you have to boot off that USB drive. Uh, you save some money by bringing your own device. Um, but anyway, it boots off of their USB into their environment that is fully locked down. So um, you're welcome to bring your own device. Um, it's not going to, but you won't have access to any additional software or data that than what anyone else will have. So. That's not going to help you. Bring, bring your own device. Um, again, boots into a highly uh, locked down Linux environment. That, that's it. Um, now, there may be a calculator in their environment. I don't know. I never looked for one. It's, uh, I don't know what, what Linux is based off of. These are Cisco nerds, so it's probably Arch. They probably built it from scratch, but whatever. <laughs> uh, I have no idea. But um, So I don't know. Is, is a calculator like a standard thing in most... Linux desktops? If so, it's probably there somewhere. I don't know why they would turn off a calculator. But at no point did I, when I was taking the exam, at no point did I feel like I needed the calculator. And um, I will say I, I did have to do some summarization. It's on the blueprint. It's, uh, it's definitely a skill that any engineer should have. So it makes sense that it's going to be on the exam. And um, I don't recall it being uh, particularly challenging. Um, there, there is some challenge. The challenge doesn't come from the math of the summarization. The challenge comes from the objectives that you're trying to achieve with summarization. So it's not about, can you do really complicated, if I give you all these networks, uh, can you do some, some weird, uh, binary math to try to make it work to only get specific things or something? Frankly, summarization is generally really easy. You should be able, most, in most cases, you can look at it and just do it in your head or, um, especially if you've been practicing lately and you have like all the binary, the, like the, 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 uh, you know, network boundaries all in your head. Um, and if not, all you need to do is just write out, write, write out the subnet, you know, in zeros, and then just count and be like, okay, that's what that's that's what it needs to be. So usually, summary summarization should be pretty straightforward. Um, and again, they're not trying to do. Th there's a big difference, and this is this is important to 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 recognize. There's a big difference in today's CCIE and the CCIE of years ago, and that is by and large. They've stopped with the gotchas. They stopped with the gotchas for, for good reason, right? When we were doing route switch, while there were new technologies, um, there wasn't a ton. The vast majority of route switch from a few years ago was very, very similar to what it was 10 years or 15 years before, well, maybe not 15, but 10 years before, excuse me, before that, for a very long time, uh, route switch was, a lot of it was the same. And so they had to come up with really creative ways for you to prove that you understand these well-known, well-established technologies. 
the but things have changed now because you you need to know most of what was on the route switch exam plus a crap ton more there's no time for the stupid gotcha questions and the ridiculous black magic questions it's just there's no time for it and it doesn't prove anything you know when i took uh, narbic's uh, class uh, he teaches a lot still in that mindset of the black magic. And it's really interesting. It's really interesting to go through. It's really interesting to do those labs where you're, uh, you know, kind of tweaking things in a way that... But the problem is, once you're done with the exam, you will never see that again. And uh, now Narvik would disagree. He, there, someone specifically asked, have you ever done this in the real world? And he's like, oh yeah, there was this time where I had to do this. So maybe, I don't know. Um, but there's just too much. There's too much now. You, you can't, we, there's, so there's none of that black magic. So the, everything that you have to do, and I've said this in other videos, none of it is in, on its own, particularly complex. Uh, there's nothing individually that you're like, oh my gosh, this one task is so unbelievably difficult. Um, it's, it's all of it. It's making it all work. It's that when you go through all these tasks, when you're done, you have to have a functioning, optimized network. And the optimization is what we're going to talk about here in a moment. <clears throat> That's where the tricky part comes from, is having everything working with all these different technologies working and working well. Optimized. Okay, uh, back to your question. So anyway, BYODV, that's not going to help you in any while. I didn't use the scrap paper. I didn't feel like I needed a calculator. Um, yeah, and I'm not trying to, it's not a, a humble brag. That's just, I don't think it was really necessary. You, you know, at some point, again, if you just need to write down some eight zeros on a page and just count to do a little bit of quick binary math, maybe, maybe. But you certainly don't need to write a, uh, a Python script and I don't know how you'd have time to do that, frankly. Uh, and if you, if you have the understanding to sit down and off the top of your head write a Python script to do summarization, then you clearly understand how summarization works, and you don't really need the script to do it because it's not that complex. Okay, so enough of that. But I, so, so yeah, that, that directly answers your question, but there is a bigger question that I think we also need to address. So let's talk about this here for uh, a minute. So like I said, the, the trick is getting everything working together and optimizing those routing tables. What we want is nice, tidy, as much as possible, routing tables. So I'm gonna talk about a few technologies that maybe you need to make sure that you're really comfortable with. And I'm going to try to do this in a way that is um, generic enough that I'm not going to get in trouble. I really don't need to get in trouble right now for my CCIE. So let's talk about this. So first off, um, let's come over here. Oh, let's just talk about this real quick. So let's imagine that you have a network that's something like this. You have multiple sites um, running multiple different routing protocols. It's MPLS. So you are running BGP. You're running uh, eBGP with the customer edge, and you are responsible for, you are both the customer and the service provider. So you're running eBGP here, you're running iBGP internal here, multi-protocol BGP. Uh, these might be multiple customers. So maybe they're multiple customers, so you need different VRFs. Maybe they're multiple customers, but this is a CCIE exam, so they're multiple customers, but they need to talk to each other in very specific ways with only very specific things. Um, so you have different routing protocols at different sites. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe this customer has a backup link or uh, maybe it's a preferred link uh, between the sites. So they're running BGP uh, here, and yet they're still doing OSPF. And uh, so let's, okay, so a couple things I wanna talk about. First off, let's imagine this site. Here we have a ton of devices. You know, and these are all interconnected, right? These are all interconnected. 
So because of that, we have, what do we have? We have a ton of slash 30s. All these two host networks. All right. So we have major networks, you know, hanging off of the devices perhaps, that do need to be advertised to the other sites, but no one needs to know about these. No one needs to know about your little uh, interconnect, your uh, interconnect networks, your slash 30s. So how do we eliminate those from the routing table? We're thinking about. We have OSPF here between sites. And BGP with the MPL, with the provider. So how do we make sure that these sites take the right path? You know, uh, we're thinking about how do we ensure that this site only knows about the things it needs to know over here, and this site only knows it need about the things it needs to know over here. That's worth thinking about. Um, MPLS. So like I said, you're responsible for MPLS. So you have to build an MPLS network, potentially. Um, so how do we tidy up the MPLS network? How do we keep it nice and concise? That's worth thinking about. We have uh, these different sites. Um, in OSPF, we have area types. That's going to help us control our routing table size. Right? In EIGRP, we have site types. That's going to help us control our routing table size. Uh, so, But we also might want to some networks to be summarized and others not to be. So how do you do that? And what if, uh, what if say, this site is a tunnel. So that it's going through the MPLS, but it's hanging off of a tunnel. So these networks show up at this site. How do we handle that to make sure that everything flows properly? And how do we make sure that only the right stuff is seeing the right things, right? So this gives you an idea about sort of the, uh, this is very simple. I will tell you that um, the exam is more complex than this because you're also adding in things like software-defined WAN and software-defined access. And you also have, don't forget, we're doing IPv4 and IPv6. So you need to know <laughs> all of these tricks for both of them. And while they're usually similar, in some instances they are different. So you need to know that stuff. So let's just, I have a little list here of things that you might want to think about. Um, and again, this is about optimization. So you, you specifically asked, uh, I, it hurts when IP, you asked about summarization, which is a form of optimization. And I want to say, there's not a ton of summarization uh, for me. Maybe you'll see more. Um, but some things that you might want to think about are, and this is, uh, this is one thing that I, I, I want to hit home on. Did I say this already? I don't know. Um, one thing I want to hit home on is there is no individual task. Uh, maybe, maybe one or two subtasks on the whole exam that were like, uh, I don't know how to do that. The vast majority of the exam is what I would call CCNP level stuff. It's stuff that you probably know. You might not know off the top of your head if you're just beginning to study for the IE, but stuff you probably know. The trick is doing all of it, doing it all of it right, doing all of it in an optimized way, and doing all of that within the time frame. That's what takes it to the next level. So I'm going to tell you some things that you might want to pay attention to or might want to make sure that you're really good at and you fully understand and you're going to be like of course I know all that stuff but um, passive interfaces again controlling the routing table what gets uh, what's what's being routed what's not um, OSPF area types OSPF route types the different types of 
um, internal and external routes, uh, OSPF prefix su suppression. Um, we're gonna there's as you can look at this diagram. There's a lot of redistribution going on. Everything's being redistributed all over the place. So how do we control redistribution? Uh, tags, route maps, uh, again route types, uh, distribute lists, prefix lists, all these sorts of things. Uh, you need to be pretty good at. Um, MPLS. Uh, how do you control the number of labels in your MPLS network? Think about that. And then again with the MPLS, uh, you know, we're doing BG, we're doing multiple, maybe there's multiple customers, multiple VRFs. How do you handle what goes where, who sees what? So uh, you might want to spend some time on import maps and export maps. Um, but again, I have no idea what you're going to see. These are things that uh, I, I spent some time on and were helpful and uh, maybe it'll be helpful for you too. So anyway, um, all right, that's it. I need to go get my kid from daycare. I'll see you next time.